Hi guys, it's Sharon Day Bainbridge here from Butterfly Lullaby and today I'm making myself some green tea and this isn't any old green tea it's Japanese knotweed green tea and I believe this is probably the best green tea you can get what I've done is I've actually blended some Japanese knotweed leaves and stems and I've put them into the jar, I haven't sieved them so I've left the green leaves in them, what I do is I strain them as I go so um, I add like you would milk to a cup and then just top it up with water. I would highly recommend this book, Invasive Plant Medicine. If you don't know already, but um, plants that grow naturally in the wild are probably the most beneficial plants to your body that there are because there are no chemicals, they're all naturally grown um, in the soil, which proves the soil's good. And you know, the nutritional value is probably out of this world compared to things in the shops that have been left there for days. You know, we're told to um, pick things fresh or go to the farmer's market to get food fresh. So what better way than to get plants from your garden and eat them or create drinks with them and get the real nutrition value. In this book, Invasive Plant Medicine by Timothy Scott, you see he also mentions Stephen Buhner, who I believe first found out that Japanese not really treated Lyme disease. But inside this book it actually mentions that Japanese not really has got four patents. If you turn to page 225, you'll see the scientific studies and that the um, Japanese knotweed has the French paradox, resveratrol, and that's found in red wine. But the best uh, resveratrol you can get is transresveratrol, which is found in Japanese knotweed. And this plant is worthy of at least four patents, it states in this book. But I've actually found more than four patents on the internet and I'd like to find more of your help. So, um, as I mentioned, it's got transresveratrol, which is fantastic. So this plant, we need to tell people about this plant. Um, there's also an article on my blog from a scientist questioning all the bad press about this plant, because it's a worthy plant. Here you go, there's a study here in Leicester. The Japanese knotweed is a tall um, plant, dies down in winter, since only female plants occur in Britain, they are only able to reproduce sexually. Japanese knotweed nutrition. You know, this plant's been used by the Chinese for hundreds of years. Yet, in the Western world, we don't hear about it hardly. So here we have Dr. Gregor's How Not to Die cookbook, which I'm going to be getting to cure my family's health the end of the year. My family are very fussy, they don't eat enough fruit and veg. I'm making them smoothies. I'm putting Japanese knotweed into the water now to get nutrition into their bodies. But this is what I hope is going to change their health around. If Dr. Greg is good enough for Google, he's good enough for you and your family. And this is really interesting. A new scientist magazine reader bucks the trend. Basically, Ruth Burrows um, is telling us that Japanese knotweed is not all that bad as we're told um, and she's concerned about it and she's just writing here about all the good things about Japanese knotweed so you know why is it that science needs to be speaking out more and getting into the papers but it's not getting to the papers because the papers don't want to hear this the papers are making too much money out of destroying this plant. So I'd really highly recommend the Invasive Plant Medicine book by Timothy Lee Scott. And, you know, check out, you know, the scientific studies there. I mean, he's just noted four paintings, but there's many, many more now. So it's really worth investigating before this bug destroys this plant completely and other valuable herbal plants. 
that's all from me, Sharon J. Bainbridge, and I hope to speak to you guys soon, and uh, leave a comment below. And if you're going to leave a comment about Japanese knotweed, please make sure you research the plant before leaving a comment. Thank you. Bye-bye.